So now when we say Kukubu Afwajiman, who are you? Oh, they, this is me. I'm an open book. I, I feel you like are, you're the attorney in every, New York. Everybody, everybody. The Ghanaian attorney in New York. I am a Ghanaian attorney in New York. I, I also sit as a, the president of the Association of Ghanaian Lawyers of America. Which Tell us about that. I, you know, I, when I came back to New York, I realized that there were so many attorneys mm -hmm. um, with some, some heritage, uh, you know, laced to Ghana, even if they were not fully Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I sought to do was I thought that it would be great to have... Um, an association because we have we have special needs that mm -hmm. we can kind of talk about. We have special things that we want to do. So Not only for Ghanaian, ourselves, but also Ghanaian, Ghanaian attorneys, attorneys with, with some connection to Ghana. Uh, now, is it, what, what does that mean? Well, are, are they people what? of Ghanaian origin? Or they may be people of Ghanaian origin. Mm -hmm. They may have one parent who's, who's Ghanaian. Okay, okay. They may, you know, that context sort of throws it away uh, is from it for, here. for New Yorkers or the whole it, America, the, the whole of the United States. We okay. have. We have attorneys practicing in, say, Minnesota, where mm -hmm. this incident happened. Uh, we have attorneys in the D.C. In fact, there's a chapter of our association in the D.C., Maryland, and, and Virginia. Let me just, yeah. So the United States of America, when Barack Obama was elected, should that not have represented the apogee of the victory of self-determination from the speech of Martin Luther King um, all the way to Colin Powell becoming the first black secretary of state, then Dr. Condoleezza Rice? you know, becoming, uh, there was Carl Lewis in there in 1984 Olympics, showing off what blacks can do Indeed. again. Then eventually Barack Obama got elected against, or, or was first in the Democratic Party. And then as president of the United States, shocked the whole world. Right. What happened? And let's not forget Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali. Yes, Muhammad Ali, yes, Muhammad did a lot, yeah. Uh, and, and many other people. Um, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of intellectuals are trying to decipher what actually happened with that. Um, you're right. Barack Obama, uh, President Barack Obama's um, election was the apogee of everything. And so it was thought, in fact, the phrase came up after he had been elected, post-racial America. Mm -hmm. oh, post-racial. So, post -racial. It, so it, it, end, it was end, a going end phrase, of racial America. It was a going phrase for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. till this date, uh, some people would like to see that way. Um, but I recall the morning after he'd been sworn in as President of the United States, uh, and you witnessed it. You, mm. you, you were uh, there. I happened you to be in America. You were in America. Yes, I remember yeah. that you, you yeah. reported on it yeah. and everything. Um, the morning after, I went to work, uh, and I work with you know all kinds of people, you know, white, black, uh, Latino, all kinds of people. So you couldn't hide your smile. You walked chest out. You know, you're very proud as a black person in America. Um, but I, I saw right there that. The joy that I felt wasn't the joy that everybody around me was feeling. For mm. some people, it, it was difficult to handle. And so not everybody felt the way that we did. That was my conclusion. That some people did who were on the other side and didn't, you know, didn't want to express it. Um, and so that gave a little pause to it. But fast forward, I think it began to dawn on people that, well, we actually do have a black president. And some celebrated it, many did. But there were people who I think till this day could not deal with it. And so the expression thereof um, began to come through in different ways. There were people who said, for example, that, well, now you have a black president, which means this is a post-racial America. A black person can do everything. Mm -hmm. And so there was no need for, for example, affirmative action. Mm -hmm. There was no need for what they called handouts to minorities and black people, mm -hmm. so to speak, because now you've achieved the best of it all. You've showcased your ability to do everything, including being the president of the United States of America. But, um, you know, it was suspect because we questioned, some of us really questioned, well, just because you have a black president doesn't mean that a problem is solved because this, these problems are in the minds of people. Now, fast forward to the last maybe three, four years. When, when do we have our midterm elections? At midterm elections, mm -hmm. uh, you immediately saw when the this actually goes back further when the Tea Party began yeah. began, you mm. know, its wranglings and it started going around the country, and when the Republicans actually won as well as the Tea Party, mm -hmm. um, they won the house, the both houses of um, um, of Congress. You immediately saw what was happening in America, because there was a lot of dissatisfaction with the regime of Barack Obama, and I think part of that problem was just dealing with a black president, more so than his policies. Um, if you look at the statistics that's of what... A, that's what interesting. It is. And if you look at what Barack Obama has been able to do as a president, I'm, I'm definitely a diehard fan of his, and I think he's done extremely well. But for Republicans and conservatives 
constantly being in his way, I think he's done a tremendous amount of work. Because I look back to where we were before he came in. And I think, you know, the economy is, is doing well. It hasn't trickled down as much as um, it should. Um, there are people who criticize him for not doing well. I think the obstructionism on the other side also hasn't helped. But a lot of people who were on the other side have not been able to deal with the fact that we have a black president that is actually being successful, that has been able to pass some of the most, some of the most difficult legislations in our life, lifetime. Um, I, I know that it's, you know, the Affordable Health mm. Plan, uh, so health, um, Obamacare. the Obamacare, has been watered down a lot. But ultimately, the thoughts behind it is a good one. And, and many people didn't think that it was going to pass, and it did. Mm. And so the, 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 the so you think systemic, systemic America has not changed? I, you know, America is, is, is an interesting country. Mm. It's an interesting country. Every so often, you have an eruption that leads you to begin to question mm -hmm. whether systemic America has changed. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I'll give to the country, though, is that at all times, it's able to galvanize and come back together um, and, and deal with its problems. That's the one thing that I think America has that um, a country like Ghana or, or many other countries just do not have. So the ability to rally around again, around a problem, and to solve the problem is there. And sooner than later, I think this too will, um, will begin to, to find its own solutions. But it's Let, going to take a lot of Let's look at the differences education. between uh, the African, mm -hmm. um, uh, the African from Africa, like you, like Ekwa Champon, like Kofi Amoa, who is typing uh, ferociously. He, he wants me to read his one. message. So when he's finished typing, I'll read, okay. I'll read the message. Okay. Uh, and, and people like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, and Barack Obama, for instance, uh, whose father was from was, Kenya. Was from Kenya. Yeah. The difference but, but was raised mostly raised white. In America, yeah. Mm -hmm. The difference between people like you and the African-American, does the American system look at you guys differently? In large part, I think it does. Um, what is the basis? What's the denominator? Well, look, I see people on the street, and I can't tell whether they're Africans or they're African-Americans. Uh, for one thing, we're all black, right? Mm -hmm. And so... Maybe the thing that distinguishes us is, 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 is your accent, because when I speak, you know that I'm from Africa. I'm yeah. not from the United yeah. States yeah. originally. So, mm -hmm. so that is a distinguishing factor. Mm -hmm. um, Does the system treat you differently? You know what? African if you went Americans, to a hotel I, and said you wanted to, to, um, to stay in the suite of, of the Marriott in Washington, D.C., and, and your accent indicated that you were coming, you're an African of sorts, no, would, it, would it no. make a difference? To that extent, no. I think, you're, I think you're black, you're black. That's your black, you're to, black. To begin with. Um, if you're an attorney? If, who's going to know that until you tell them? If they find out, do they treat you differently? They may, they may treat you a little differently, but for the most part, you're still black. Mm. And I've, you know, I, together with my friends, we've been in situations where a blue-collar white American believes that they're better off than you are. And so, and I, I don't mean blue color as, as, as being bad, mm -hmm. but you know, in the context of what you're saying, being a, an attorney, mm -hmm. um, and, and you're black, you're black. And, and so I think more than parsing out who's black and who's African-American and who's you know, not African-American, I think more importantly, we should really be galvanizing together. I don't think that, you know, No, I'm just asking for the analysis sake. Mm -hmm. Is there a different way in which police, because I'll come to ask you the See, questions of the specific I, I occurrences of last week. Yeah. Assuming that the gentleman who was uh, shot in the car, that is his girlfriend sort of video, we had a photograph here and mm -hmm. viewers, uh, some of those photographs that we may be showing are right. not very palatable, right. uh, just so right. that you know. So your viewers um, that that, um, that guy, for instance, mm -hmm. if he were his speaking... His Filand Filando yes. Castile. I if Castile was speaking with a Nigerian accent and he showed his his uh, ID card as an attorney, would the police reaction to him have been different? It might have been. Why and, would and it that, be? And that, mm -hmm. that might also be the case if it was a white person um, showing his, his ID. It might have been. Mm. And I think, you know, if he spoke back to the, the uh, police officer, they would probably feel a little less intimidated. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I don't know that it's justified. I don't know that it's justified, but I think no, I'm not talking about it's just it's I just want the analysis yeah. whether whether that occurs in America. I, I I think so. I mean, once you open your mouth, they know that okay, you're not from here, and so they may maybe tone down a little bit on the aggression if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. But we've seen situations where you didn't have to open your mouth. You just get you just you just you get know, violated. You, you just get violated. We've seen those too, 
because of the color of your skin or if we look at the situation we can tell that it has something to do with race. So what has happened to all the work that had been done with self-determination? Gone down the drain? I don't think so. Um, and I, I was speaking to... Let me I just interrupt you and talk about... Uh, because Thomas. we have 55 minutes uh, sure. past 9, 5 minutes to 10 right now. Right. Um, Kofi Amoa says, and those are the photographs on the screen, uh, please look at it. Uh, if you can, but they are not very palatable. Uh, let's get back to the studio. We can show it uh, for, too, for too long. Uh, really sorry about that incident. Very, very sorry about it. Uh, good evening, Paul, and I salute um, uh, to your eloquent guest. That's Amoa. Uh, he says, you. You, Obama was elected largely on, potent, on the potent of his ideas for solving the problems uh, Americans were facing, but not because of his blackness. The racial undercurrents did not disappear, but in fact, in so many ways, the more Obama succeeded, the deeper the anti-black feeling got. That's the point that you were making. That's, that's, ah, yeah, that's, very that's close, disappointing. Yeah. Yeah. For is. a black man to succeed as president of the U.S. will be a clear demonstration, will be a clear destruction of the supposed inferiority of the black race. Paul, too much to say on this topic, but your guest is on top. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, thank you, Dr. Moore, for watching. But, Although I but, have to say, if you hmm. spoke to 20 different people, you're going to get 20 different well, opinions. Well, but he's, he's sort he of... Appears, he yeah, appears He's been be, in America for a very yep, long time, he too. He has, way before And he's I making the him. point. So yeah. it is the... So there's a bit of pain that Barack succeeded after all. Uh, you know what? When you look at the lineup of presidents going back... I mean, Barack is, what, 44th? 44th, 44, yeah. 44th president. Mm -hmm. um, he's the only one. When you look at the photographs and everything, it's striking. He's the only black. It's striking. And, and I, I don't want to justify it, but... There's a certain part of people, especially white folks, who will look at it and, you know, it, it takes you aback. I've seen it and I've, I've wondered. But why would anybody feel that Barack might not succeed, given his background as an Ivy League scholar, well, uh, uh, young man review of the uh, uh, editor of the Harvard Law Review, which meant, which spoke to his academic, academic proficiency. Yeah. And, and then... Well, you know, even he, that is questioned, right? Uh, it is? Uh, Trump, oh, Trump wanted to see his grades from Harvard. Oh, I see. It doesn't that. matter that Donald Trump... Yeah, <laughs> yeah it doesn't matter okay. that the guy went on to but become he was editor the of, editor of, of the yeah, Harvard Law Review. Yeah, Harvard Law Review. And in any event, he was the first, mm. uh, the first black person mm. to be editor of the Harvard Law Review after, what, hundreds of years. So, um, you know, mm. it's not going to go away. I don't think racism is ever going to go away. Mm. I think what's going to happen is we're always going to have to find ways to deal with it. Tonight, President Barack Obama spoke about racism. Um, he spoke some hard truths. He's dealt with the subject. This is a new one that. Yeah. Th this is a new one that this both of you new. and Dr. Amo are talking about. This is, this, this is worrying. This is that people are not happy that Barack succeeded. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And and it sort of it, it 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 deconstructs the black inferiority situation. Right. Because after all, he has a black man who has been president and who who has done well. Right. Mm, that's disappointing. Where do you think we are right now? In in uh, all, as, as all of this uh, all of this. Crisis. You know. But just before then, just a family question, if you don't mind. Right. How, how have you raised your children in this kind of America? You know what, I've tried, I've had a conversation. My son and I, mm -hmm. um, he was 12 when Trayvon Martin uh, was, was killed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I did have a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the conversation bordered on, you know, if a cop stops you, mm -hmm. first of all, be nice, be respectful. Something that, you know, my, my kids already know, and they're always respectful anyway. But I said, there's really, that's not the place to fight. Mm -hmm. I'll go fight for you later on in the courtroom. Yeah. Or I'll find That's what you told or, your son. Yeah, okay. I'll find somebody who can. Mm -hmm. But look, if he wants to handcuff you, if he puts you down, comply. If they mm -hmm. say stop, you stop. They want to see your ID, show your ID. Um, maybe this is the little difference between us and some African Americans, not all of them. Because there's a certain, you know, based on what they have seen years and years and years um, or decades, um, there's a certain rebelliousness that mm -hmm. comes up immediately. Mm -hmm. um, in some African-American children. Um, in, in our children, we, we say to them, you know what, this is your country, this is where you were born, and all of that, but um, be careful. The thing is, you have to live to tell your story. And so you want to do everything possible so you come back home. Mm -hmm. And so be smart about it when you're on the street and a cop stops you, and by cop, I mean a policeman stops you. Because any encounter with a, police, a policeman in America, a policewoman, uh, can become ugly. So you be the smart guy, you be the guy that says, you know what, all he wants to see is my ID. Mm -hmm. If I have it, I'll give it to you. But, but these days when you are taking the ID and then, then the police feels threatened that... Well, my son isn't driving yet, but I'm sure we're going to have lots of conversations about how to take out your, your ID when you're driving. What advice because would you a, give him? Well, there's, there's, there's lots of literature on, on, on the process. Uh, keep your, keep your, your ID on the, on the dashboard. Uh, inform them of what you're doing before you do it. You know, they ask you, they want to see your ID, which is routine. They but want you, to know who you are. Do you, do you sympathize with the police as a lawyer? 
uh, when the police say that increasingly mm -hmm. um, they, they, they feel under pressure and they feel panicky when black people uh, pull, are, are preparing to pull something like their ID and when they see them, the, the hostility and all of that. Is it, is it a true story or is it a narrative that's created? The, you know, it only really takes, I might sound like I side with them, I don't. Mm. Uh, but it only really takes a split second. A split second, mm -hmm. I mean literally, for something to happen when a cop comes close to you. Mm -hmm. You don't have enough time to think through? Either you don't have enough time or he doesn't have enough time. It really is a split second decision. So Why while, do they while you stop black people anyway? In terms of the crime rate in mm -hmm. New York and New Jersey, for instance, is it more black people? Statistically, yes. It's been proven that, you know, they're more actually... One of the lines that we, we learned in law school was driving while black. It was sort of, mm. it was couched. Dri driving while black mm -hmm. is an offense in itself, so to speak. I see. Not that it's, it's in the law books or anything, yeah. but it was more, it's one of those uh, things we said around law school because uh, there have been studies and studies and studies that have been done. Black male. Black, first of all. Okay. And then you're going to have more black males mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. uh, because the threat is really the black male, mm. not as much the black female. Okay. And, you know, if you watch any of these videos, you have to ask yourself, did they not have a minute? to say to somebody, nope, don't do that, put your hand up here. Didn't they, they, they have could a, have. Didn't they have a minute? Don't they have a second? So in many cases, you have to come to the con conclusion that while it is an instinctive move, what you're going to do, you also do have that second to make a better decision. Are white um, males in America cultured to be scared of black males? I, I think there's something there. It's not that they are cultured to be that way. Um, but the, the books that have been written about, you know, a certain deep, deep-seated feeling, for example, about, uh, it, and some of it has to do with just sex and, and the fact that sex. a black sex and it's, what a, does it's, sex a, mean? it's a theory that that the black male is, is more more competent in that area than a, a white. It, it's been it's been bandied okay, around the, a lot, the, and so it leads to the sex proficiency of the black male, which is better know, than a white male, supposedly. And this is a supposedly. verdict of white women. Um, I, I I wouldn't know. I mean, there's studies that have, have okay, talked about these things, and it, it leads sounds petty, but it's serious. It, it is. It is, and it, it sometimes. Well, the kid who went to um, South Carolina mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and killed a lot of people in church, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he said it. He that said, you know, you, you know, the black people are taking our women and that sort of thing. They're raping our women, he said. Mm -hmm. you know, so there's a certain thinking that, that um, you know, the machismo of a man mm -hmm. lies there and it's attacked in a very psychological manner. Mm -hmm. And so there's a certain feeling, too, that perhaps there's, there's some superiority in that area. If you watch black athletes play, mm -hmm. you know, play basketball, basketball football, football. You know, it's insane. They're, they're great. And they do things that other people don't do the as well. The sheer strength. The sheer strength. And, and I think it presents a certain challenge at the core. Um, and the way to deal with it sometimes is to subdue as many black people as they, as they can. This isn't, these are all theories. Some of them conspiracy theories. That's really theory, interesting. I wish we had more time to get going I, to that. But you that's, know what? That's now you do. have something to contribute. And so we want you to come and contribute. What kind of opportunity and what kind of event, what kind of narrative will bring you people like you back to Ghana? I know you're the president of the Ghanaian Association of Attorneys, but you're going back to tell them a story. And I'm sure oh, most that, of them will watch that, this on that's internet. That's a great elevator pitch question. Yeah. So I might as well just tell exactly mm. what I'd, I'd like to do. Yeah. Um, there's, there's plenty that a lawyer can do. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, you know, everything, the whole gamut is, is, is open and available. Anything from, from, uh, from working, working in governance to, to corporations, to private work, law firms. I mean, the whole gamut appears to be open and available. Um, on, on the broader question of what can be done, uh, by the, the, let me speak generally to diaspora yeah. associations. There are lots of diaspora mm -hmm. associations. Uh, there's an association of Ghanaian engineers. There's our association of lawyers. We're looking to do work to help people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're not looking to do work to make money, but to be involved. For example, there are many people in our prisons who have never had the benefit of a, of a trial or even yeah. a hearing. They have, they've been put in remand and they've stayed there forever. These are people who just need a lawyer to sit with them go through their papers. And indeed, some of our members have been able to get people out of prison because they weren't supposed to be there in the first place. At the very least, everyone deserves a hearing before you know you take their liberty away. And we're willing to work but with But we found groups. oil in Ghana and uh, contracts have been done, contracts are being done. Is this something that your association will, for free, support the Office of the Attorney General? 
we would love to work, and support work with the GMPC. The, we would like to support GMPC. We would like to support the uh, the Attorney General's mm -hmm. office. Uh, I don't know about free. If it's pro bono, it's pro bono. Mm. But if we found oil and it needs people to help with uh, the contract, mm. well, I think we'd, we'd definitely be willing to talk with them about it. So we should um, be looking to see Kukuba Fajman back in Ghana two, three years' time, if Bridget will allow it. Who knows? Is she coming as well? Who knows? Maybe. Who knows?